And now it's time for another edition of What Would Jello Do? And today what we're going to do is science. A wake-up call in a way. Yeah, we've got a better science president now, the great C. LeConte, Joe Biden. He has done some good things. Let's give him credit, including some surprises I didn't think he would do at all. But one thing that got snuck in early on, one of the first Trump initiatives they thought he was going to cancel, he said, no, we're keeping it. On with the Space Force. Really? What? A space force is going to be my own branch of the military. People remember for this. Forgot my Leonard Nimoy album as a prop. Sorry. But you get the point. What do we need a space force for in the first place? This is as wacko as when George W. Bush said he was going to send somebody to Mars, and thankfully he didn't mean himself on a one-way ticket. Where is the threat? Who is our enemy in space? Isn't cyber warfare and Putin's hacks right here on the ground more important and more of a threat to world security? Climate collapse, anyone? There's a global security issue. And directly related is refugees. War, China, genocide, climate collapse from inequality, and of course, the ongoing worldwide war against democracy itself. The Air Force has already had a space command since 1982, its budget now being $14 billion a year. What exactly is all that spent on? Oh, we don't know. It's just your tax money, right? And remember when Reagan went and announced the big space thing, Star Wars, and we needed space weapons? Well, that came not from a careful Pentagon study or anything, but from a conspiracy nut, the original wacky dude, Lyndon LaRouche, the same one who said that Queen Elizabeth was controlling the world drug trade, and boy, would I have fun imagining how that one would work. Well... His right-hand guy, Ed Meese, was an attorney general by then, a Lyndon LaRouche lieutenant got to him and pitched LaRouche's weird fantasy we need, we must have particle beam weapons in space. We need to have all this stuff right now or the Soviets are going to get us even though their economy is collapsing, which LaRouche had to know. Well, this guy got to Meese. Meese took it to Reagan, and that night, Reagan announced Star Wars without even consulting his Defense Department, and the bonanza was on. All these defense contractors we know and love today who still wreck our economy year after year had one big project and experiment after another, and what do you know? After all of the stuff with Reagan and Daddy Bush, not one attempt at one of these weapons ever worked. Was that a failure? No, that's exactly what it was supposed to be. A huge windfall of more profits for defense contractors to keep our phony war economy going so they could keep raking in the money. Gee, thanks, Harry Truman, for the permanent war economy. Anyway, it was all a big scam like that. And then Ronald Dumsfeld and Condoleezza Rice, too, if I recall, were scheduled to give speeches on September 11th, 2001, on why we needed to go all in on Star Wars again. Thank you, Osama bin Laden, for delaying this at least a while, except Rumsfeld got some huge, humongous, super expensive ship to fire into all the space weapon stuff that may still be floating around in the Pacific somewhere looking for something to do. And even Trump's Space Force is still not really a separate branch. It's inside the Air Force without authority to hire their own personnel and no defined mission whatsoever. Just borrow 200 officers and a few thousand Air Force people or whatever to Trump said, conquer the unknown. Conquer what? Why do we always have to conquer things? Isn't that what's gotten us so much trouble at home and abroad? And instead of LaRouche or a lieutenant planning it in the peasant's pea brain, this time, guess who did it? According to the New York Times, it was your friend and mine, the most toxic figure in the entire Trump regime, Jared Kushner. Yeah. 
So, toadying along, December 11th, 2019, although I think it was the whole defense bill, the House passes Space Force 377 to 48, which included 188 Democrats, including Adam Schiff. And then the Senate on December 17th, 2019, passed the same bill 86 to 8. Yeah. So, to go boldly go where no one has been dumb enough or crooked enough to ever try to go before, then what do they come up with but the Space Force logo, which was a direct ripoff of the Federation of Planets logo from Star, from Star Trek. And even Ben and Jerry's gets into the, here we go, here we have Boots on the Moon, Space Force. Force Ice Cream. I guess it was a Netflix show too, but it came out right at the same time. Space Force works to get boots back on the moon. This cosmic concoction will launch your dreams into orbit with fudgy astronaut cows and toffee meteors. Oh boy. I'm still not convinced. And then... The Trump Amok 2020 website, which is still up, official Trump 2020, is talking all kinds of stuff, including Trump Rushmore, where his head is bigger than George Washington's and partially blocking it, and Trump 2024 or Trump DeSantis 2024 shirts. Well, also his own different Space Force logo, also a rip, more or less, of Star Wars. And then the chief of Space Force training told the Washington Post, it's a culture we're trying to build with these guys, starting very young. Their fangs are out. They're wanting to fight against somebody. Conquer somebody in space? So they can hone their fangs and beat them almost every time. Almost every time? You see that you're a war fighter since space is the final frontier, and we have to outpace our adversaries. Doing what? Playing video games? What else can you do at this point? Elon Musk weighs in. I think it's cool. That's funny. A lot of other people don't. There has been a prevention of an arms race in outer space treaty, in other words, PAROS, P-A-R-O-S, negotiated since the 60s, 1967, negotiated and carefully crafted for ye over years by the United States, Britain, and the Soviet Union. Then, every president, from Johnson to Nixon to Reagan to both of the Bushes to Obama to now, has refused to sign our own Paris Treaty and even vetoed it whenever it comes up at the UN. There's a treaty not to go mining the moon in, uh, that was done in 1969, but of course we didn't sign that either. Instead, Obama, of all people, signed the Space Act, giving private U.S. companies the rights to anything they mine from any other celestial body. Where do you get the power for all this? Well, NASA and the Pentagon have been advocating for a while now why we need to put nuclear reactors in outer space. Yeah. They are not alone. For, God, 35 years or so, I have received this publication as a prank. I have a funny feeling Gary Floyd is to blame, because he put me on a bunch of religious right mailing lists too, and I learned a lot about the way they really work. This is from Hillsdale College, a little right-wing factory of right-wing students in uh, Michigan in the Detroit area, and every month they've got somebody like Clarence Thomas or Steve Bannon or whatever on the cover, and here we go, here's who they is going to, how about COVID? Will Truth Prevail by Dr. Scott Atlas? That's one month transcript of when they talked to the school, but earlier we had the urgent need for United States Space Force by Stephen L. Quast, or Quast, Lieutenant General, United States Air Force, retired, former commander of Air Education Training Command at Joint Base San Antonio Randolph. They doesn't say he was booted because of so many wacky statements coming out of his mouth, like technology can be built today to deliver any human being from any place on planet Earth to any other place in less than an hour. Things like that. The reason for a space force is simple. Space is the strategic high ground from which all future wars will be fought. Tell that to Ethiopia. 
if we do not master space, our nation will become indefensible. Never mind a lot of our conduct is indispensable as, as it is right now. And uh, raw materials worth trillions of dollars are available within a few days' travel from Earth and other strategic high grounds. America's greatest competitor for the high ground of space is Communist China, which is already fully engaged in building effective space capabilities. If America doesn't get off the mark soon, China will dominate the economy and domain of space. What, selling pet food to asteroids? I have no idea. They are open about their plan to become the dominant power in space by 2049, assuming a livable planet Earth still exists. And we put our energy into that instead of this stuff. China's goal is to have capability to shut down America's computer systems. I thought that was Putin's job, and he's doing it now. And electrical grids at any time or place of its choosing. And China will seek to gain control of our media, businesses, land, debt, and markets. Would that be any worse than Wall Street? You tell me. And, uh, oh, but if we take over space, we'll reduce the loss of life and property due to natural disasters by managing hurricanes and tornadoes from space. Kind of like when Trump wanted to nuke a hurricane, right? The president should issue an executive order protecting the space industry, space industry, from China's predatory practices. The president should promote policies and strategies to maximize the contribution of the private sector, such as directing the Space Development Agency to partner with private companies to develop these new space capabilities. No wonder Elon Musk thought it was cool. In other words, what this is really about is trying to get into a race that neither country has the technology to win to go against China to mine the moon. Maybe that's why the Chinese spaceship landed on the dark side of the moon. I don't know. We control rare earth minerals down here. We'll do it up there, too. I mean, you could totally collapse the gold and platinum market on Earth by mining asteroids, said one person. But does anybody know how? Apparently not. Meanwhile, the Trumpsies were beating their chests of the need to privatize the International Space Station. The beauty being, space at this point is still totally unregulated thanks to no Paros Treaty, and corporations won't even tell us how many satellites they've got up there or where they are, and neither will countries. Musk, in 2019, shot up one rocket that had 60 satellites on it that all then took off on their own. 2020, 60 more rockets with 60 satellites apiece on them, apparently. Musk says he wants 12,000 of his own satellites up there by 2027, 30,000 or more after that. How will they not hit each other? Or who knows how many thousands of competing rockets shot up by Jeff Beeswax or Richard Branson or Rupert Murdoch or China or Russia or India or South Korea or North Korea. We already have a big enough problem as it is with orbital pollution, better known to us as space junk. Huge chunk of it of an old Chinese satellite crashed to Earth recently and luckily didn't hit a city this time. But they're up there whirling around at between 18 and 26,000 miles an hour, depending on how far up from Earth they are, faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, and astronomically more dangerous, even if it's a little marble-sized piece of junk this big at that speed and velocity. I'm just amazed the International Space Station hasn't been hit yet. One of those marble-sized chunks ripping right through the space station could cause so much damage like a hollow-point bullet from hell, it could take the whole thing out or render it in unusable. One estimate I saw said half a million of those marble-sized ones are floating around in outer space now. Another said, no, no, it's closer to a million. And there's 128 million little specks, less than a centimeter big, still flying around where they shouldn't be. And 34,000 chunks of shrapnel, or large debris as they call it, including satellites that burned out, and then we just left them up there, estimated to weigh around 9,300 tons. Already up there. 
In 2009, a satellite owned by a company called Iridium smashed into a decommissioned Russian satellite that they just left up there at an estimated 26,000 miles an hour. That one collision explosion produced at least 2,300 pieces of shrapnel and debris. So with that in mind, we do have an answer now, why is Jeff Beeswax so greedy? Even his own wife, as well as Bill Gates and Warren Buffett are saying, no, we're going to try and give away most of these extra billion bazillions that we've been hoarding and give it away before we die. Beeswax is, no, it's mine. It's all mine. And then to Business Insider, he answered it. The only way I can see to deploy this much financial resources is by converting my Amazon winnings, winnings he calls them, into space travel. What do you do if you're just sitting up there all alone? They're not intending to be all alone. They've got their own private colonies in mind as they can somehow invent and pay for all this. You know, bees, wax, or musk could own the entire city, the entire colony. They've been benevolent enough to bring you all up there to work for them. Kind of like neo-slaves at Amazon might have to work for them, where theoretically they could even turn off the oxygen or deduct out of their paycheck the monthly charge to rent the air from them if you're not relentlessly productive enough. Crime? There'll be crime in something that big. Estimated cost of seeping somebody in jail on Mars is a billion dollars per person per year. What are they thinking? I mean, with that level of recklessness on the part of Elon Musk and Jeff Beeswax expending to spend all his fortune putting more potential space junk and collisions up there, who would you rather have corner the rare earth's market in space? China or Elon Musk? China or Jeff Bedsore? China or Vladimir Putin? Or his magic hackers? As Marcus Durant, the old singer for Zen Gorilla and Wayne Kramer's MC50 said to me, this sounds like Jim Jones on Mars. I thought that put it very well. So all I can say is, Heed the words of Edgar Mitchell, a one-time one of our astronaut corps, the sixth man to walk on the moon, who protested Star Wars at Cape Canaveral, NASA headquarters, clear back in 1989, pointing out that one Star Wars episode, so much space junk and shrapnel would be created from all these things blowing each other up all there and hitting each other, you could never get another rocket off the planet again, even if you do have as big a smile as Richard Branson. No, you couldn't, you would mean activity on Earth that relies on satellites would pretty much shut down, according to Mitchell. Cell phones, ATM machines, cable television, traffic lights, weather prediction, and more, all hooked up to satellites, would all be lost. As it was put here, modern society would go dark. Is that worth risking all these bazillions just to keep China from mining the moon so the price is a little higher than, say, Rio Tinto or some of the other mining companies that our, our people would control? We kind of need to put the brakes on this before there's even more crap in space and for not peaceful purposes. Number one, Mr. President, oh great Silicon, cancel the Space Force. Shut it down, decommission the whole damn scam now. Sign the Peros Treaty. Even be the one to propose it this time in the UN and then start amending it to reflect the newly reality and technological advances. But get that thing on the books first for crying out loud and for Elon Musk and Beeswax and Branson and the rest, how about putting that money towards the technology we need to send up in space to collect and dispose of all that space junk before something really, really bad happens, which would make Chernobyl or Three Mile Island or Fukushima look like just stepping in a puddle on your kitchen floor. That's what our security 
really depends on.